What's up everyone, it's Ice Man Oz, aka Jay, and I got my buddy Lucas alongside me, and today we're going to go over some key features that we want in the next Battlefield game. This is another discussion, so sit back, relax, enjoy the show, it's going to go for a while, so uh, yeah, please enjoy. Lucas, uh, good to have you here, man. Um, Thanks very much, buddy. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So first of all, we're gonna we've got a list here of a couple of things that we're gonna talk about. So first of all, we've got increased points for team play. So do you want to go over this a little bit? Yeah. Um, what it was was uh, when you, if you recall your nukes in battlefield video. Um, sorry, I did a reaction to that and put together some points that perhaps instead of um, having um, specific actual kill streaks, we'd have. Um, um, call-ins for increased po for getting team play points and uh, what I think that will actually do is basically for instance you would get more points for dropping down ammo bags, dropping down health kits, reviving people than you would necessarily for killing someone. KD is obviously still an important part if you're playing things like Conquest and Team Deathmatch but you get more, essentially more yeah, you essentially get more experience for doing team play, which means you'll level faster. And it'll encourage that type of gameplay. It won't be so much fun when you play solo, but it'll definitely be something worth doing to just just to just to bring it back to a, a better feel of that it's not always going to be about the KD and all the kill whores, basically. Right. That's that's and, what I'm going And and the other thing about that is the community's gone pretty bad lately. It's it's more of a KD Pouring type community, and that really comes down to the fact that a lot of players have migrated from games like Counter Strike and Call of Duty, where that is kind of the thing. The other thing you have to keep in mind when it comes to it is who is the demographic of players. And the other thing, actually, that I was thinking of is when it comes to the scoreboard. Now, I don't know what you think about this idea, but what if they put less of an emphasis on the kills and deaths on the scoreboard, but focus more on ob how many objectives were taken and maybe make that be the focus when it comes to just sheer stats? Um, I, 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 can, I can see that working. I mean... The, the the way the game works at the moment is that you you become your top based on points anyway, your first and your team based on points anyway. Um, it although it does have a huge emphasis on the number of kills and number of deaths you get, it doesn't actually tell your team score. I don't think you can get rid of it completely. I think it needs to be on the when you press the tab screen or go into the um, the, the player screen, you need to see it because it's it's a first person shooter at the end of the day. But I think not having such an emphasis on it in the screen on that particular screen would be like would have stop sorry would help people change their focus a little bit i think and then next so, up uh well th that's a very good point but next up we're going to move swiftly along is to the power pickups and this is a request of mine specifically i don't want them in the game altogether now I'm going to be on that unpopular side because I think some people see a point to them in particular game modes, but I feel they don't bring a lot to the table, and especially in modes like Team Deathmatch when there are sniper rifles which are just clearly more powerful than the base snipers, it really does ruin the mode in many aspects, and I just don't really see it being a positive, I see it really more as a negative. Well... I'm going to play devil advocate on this point a little bit because um, I, I agree with you. I do I do believe that they that they don't work at all. Um, I can I can see where they're coming from, but the weapons themselves are just so overpowered and on maps that don't make much sense. That they it just doesn't work. I think what they could do with them is perhaps. Um, change it up a little bit by having by still having power pickups, but having them just having a one or two per map, not the amount they currently have, or perhaps having them where they're specific for completing an objective or for rather that than just being a situation where it'd be like yeah. tested best for that situation. Because there's, yeah, there's no reason exactly. for there to be pickups on team deathmatch. I'm sorry, like it's just it's just unbalanced and it does not work. Well, it, it goes opinion. goes back to our first point about in, increased points for team play. Team play. Those weapons are there just for kill horn. Right. They do nothing. They they don't add to the team play or the objective gameplay on conquest rush or any objective game mode. And they break TDM because people pick them up, camp their ass off, 
I think they're freaking fantastic. Well, when so, you think you know, about it like this, I mean, you got to really remember who DICE is catering towards. I think back in the days of Bad Company 2 and even Battlefield 3, that the audience was the, the core audience, grown-ass men. Now, you have to think about who has the most time in their hands. Like I said in the previous discussion, who has the most time on their hands? Children. So they're going to cater towards children because that's who's going to buy their games and get them the most sales. What I think has happened with the Battlefield franchise is they're choosing greed over quality uh, for people like us who are grown fucking adults and I think it's 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 a shame really. It's the path that a, a lot of franchises have gone down. So things like where it's it's more of a KD whoring game and it's going to be like that in Battlefield 5 I can almost guarantee it because that's the audience they're catering towards. Mm, yeah, I mean it's just like you the Caitlin for magpies running around the screen going, ooh, look, shiny. <laughs> um, doesn't really help. I, 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 If it was implemented better, I could enjoy them, but this isn't Quake, this isn't Doom, this isn't Unreal Tournament. You know? Right. <laughs> Having pickups on the ground do not does not work in this type of game. Um, it's not an arena shooter, so... Yeah, uh, personally, I could do without them, it's and funny, I wouldn't be too upset if they go. It's funny you actually say that, because um, one of the head developers, like uh, Alan Kurtz, yes, Alan Kurtz, said to me personally, he said that he got the inspiration off of Quake for the pickups, and that's quite interesting. The problem is, this game, like you said, is not Quake, so um, that's pretty much that, I guess. Quite disappointing, the, the path they're going down, but uh, moving on to my next wish, and that is Union guns in the game. So in Battlefield 3 there were less weapons, but those weapons did unique things. In Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline, I feel like you could get literally any of those hundred weapons and they'll all do pretty decently and there's not really much of a gap there. There's no real, um, you know, go-to guns when it comes to it in my personal opinion. Now, people will have their go-to guns with minor variances, but I feel like there's not enough variance within the guns themselves. Let me give you an example. The KH-2002, a burst fire assault rifle which was absolutely deadly at medium range. Where are weapons like that in the game? There's just so many fully automatic rifles that I, I don't know which one to choose like it, it's it's just too much and they they're really just putting qu quantity over quality in my opinion when it comes to the gameplay design of the weapons mm. add to that point is that whenever you no matter what game mode you're playing you'll probably see three of three out of the entire list of guns you'll have either have the AEK the M416 um, the was it M249 or the LSAT? You'll have you'll have the SSR sniper rifle. You very really see a variant of anyone using any any of the carbines, any of the submachine guns, or anything like that, or, p or personal defense weapons. It's always a mix of those five or six guns in Battlefield 4 that you see, and that's because there's so much to choose from. There's very little variance in the weapons, and the ones that do perform well outperform the rest in my opinion and that's why they're constantly being used and like you said I mean it's all well and good having 60 weapons in a game but if 55 of them do the exact same thing at the end of the day there's no point exactly and it's it's a shame because when I put up my uh, why I uninstalled Battlefield 4 video, people were like, oh... Selfish plug, selfish plug, plugging his videos. Yep. <laughs> I, I'm plugging my video in a video, how good's that? Um, so, you know, <laughs> if the people were saying like, oh, well, if you don't like the amount of weapons, I mean, it's just more choice, isn't it? Well, really, they have put so much time into adding so many weapons that they actually forgot that they actually needed to add variants to these weapons, which is just a poor gameplay design and is inexcusable. I don't care what the excuse is. I don't care what the counterpoint is. That's the truth. So, yeah, um, no. that's just <laughs> unless you're doing is. Unless you're on YouTube doing crazy loadout videos, there's no point to them. Well, it's <laughs> It's good for, it's good for <laughs> YouTubers no because I can literally do 40 weapon reviews and I can pretty much say the same thing in all of them. So it's easy it work for me, I guess. Reviews. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so the next, <laughs> the next topic is working on release. Now, this is a oh, wish of God, mine. Yes. I want the game to actually fucking work. So uh, in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline, you can barely even launch the game half the time. Battlefield 4 still crashes and we don't need to go over all the problems that were there before the no, game has been just, improved, blah, 
blah de blah de blah. But working on release, will the, do you feel honestly that Battlefield Five will work on release? They got hardline right. They got the hardline launch right. Um, you think so? But that was a that was a different developer. Um, I think I think EA may have learned their lesson, and they've this. And the reason for that is because uh, Hardline came out well. Um, they are the same publisher. They may have said, right, the first thing we're going to concentrate on is a stable launch. That's what we got with Hardline. The community didn't want it. Want that particular game for the most part, but uh, we got like it anyway. I think it's a good game. I do. I do as well. And it was stable. I think if this fails on launch, that will be it for Battlefield as a game. I don't mm. think it will come even close to competing with Call of Duty which is which is still going strong and that's what EA wants they want their they want their Call of Duty and if they fail on the launch then sorry guys um that will it will most probably be the last battlefield I buy and that's same and then I'll just move on to Titanfall <laughs> well, <there laughs> when that go. comes out yeah the Titanfall 2 is coming out but uh, I've got a video on my thoughts about whether the game fails uh, in an upcoming video but um, so I'll save it for that, but you know, you're absolutely right, if this game launches poorly, uh, it's gonna go the route of Medal of Honor where it's beyond repair. Now, some people will say that, oh, well, Battlefield 4 got repaired, and, and they lost a lot of fans for Battlefield 4. I don't it got repaired 18 months later, man. You right. know, it's, it's, it's the game it should be now, or that it, should have, it is now that it should have been on launch. Well, I, and I, I don't think if it launched this way now, honestly, I still wouldn't think it was that good of a game. I'd say it was, it'd be passable, but I don't even think even now it's a good game. But that's, well, that's, that's my that's opinion good. about Field is tainted because of the launch, I think. I think I probably would have enjoyed it more, um, personally. Right, but, so, uh, do you mean like it left a bad taste in your mouth? Yeah, I mean, if it if it if it launched, what I'm going to saying is, if it launched with its 60 hertz servers, <clears throat> you know, if it launched without crashing, if if it launched with the hit rec, with all the CTE improvements yeah, that have been coming with, in 18 if months, if it launched with maps that actually flowed and were actually designed, well, yeah, if it was designed, yeah. if there was actual guns that actually had variants on, um, all right, <laughs> let's just move on. So um, um, yeah, so next up is one of my requests, and that is an infantry based. Shooting now, Battlefield Hardline did this uh, very well, in my opinion, when it came down to the map balance. Um, that could be argued, of course, but when you think about it for the next Battlefield game, I'd like to see it infantry-based, mainly because of the the skill required to you know be an infantry-based player. And I feel like a lot of the time when I'm on the ground, in terms of uh, Battlefield 4, when I'm on you know maps that are vehicle and infantry. Uh, driven, uh, a lot of the time the vehicles will just dominate the battle and of course they are vehicles so that's what they're supposed to do but I just feel like it's not really fun gameplay when you're on the infantry side. What do you think about that? Um, I, I understand where you're coming from, I really do, um, but I think one of the reasons why Hardline didn't do too well is because it took that element out. Um, I'm I'm not a huge fan of people flying around on a map going 142 and three in a jet, and thinking they're fantastic because they're not. Um, I I also enjoy having a hell of a good run in a tank myself. Um, I don't think you can you can specifically take out the vehicles or have it purely infantry based. I think you do need that in a battlefield game. What I would say is perhaps giving the infantry more options to take them out. Um, apart, I mean, say for instance the engineers, they get four rockets and without without a perk and it takes all four rockets to blow the shit out of a tank. Well, how does that work? There's no balance there. It takes three C4s when you can only plant two at a time to blow up a tank. Where's the balance there? Yeah. Uh, and if no one's dropping, if no one's drop, and the ammo bags that people drop, give you primary bullets but don't give you rockets quick enough so it's like <laughs> where's the balance for between infantry and vehicle gameplay now you can say well vehicles are designed to take out vehicles well then get rid of the infantry just make it freaking all tanks right. Right. <laughs> you know there's, there's there's no point to it um i think there definitely needs to be a balance between vehicles and infantry gameplay and, and counterplay. It'll definitely definitely make things more interesting. I, and I've been playing Titanfall re again recently, as you know, yep. and um, there's they have that balance. If infantry players can easily take out an enemy an enemy Titan 
um, it, it doesn't feel like you, you go up against one of those things and you're going to get crushed every single time. There is opportunity. And I know the game mechanics are slightly different, but a balance between the two where you say if you turn around the corner and you're staring down the barrel of the 150mm cannon, you can do something about it. Right. It's going to take skill, but you're going to be able to do something about it. And that's just good gameplay design, right? I mean, that's what it really comes yeah. down to. I mean, I think just when it comes down to it, the vehicle and the infantry balance was done very poorly in Battlefield 4. So, you know, and while I... You may have actually uh, changed my mind on this. If it could be designed properly... Miracles like, never cease. <laughs> yeah, right. But if it could be designed properly, I'd be more open to it. But I just don't know if that's possible. <sighs> if you know what I'm saying. And this actually plays into your topic, uh, map designed around the game mode. So you want the maps yes. to be specifically yeah. designed. Explain that a little bit. Right, well, if you play Bad Company 2, what was immediately... Sorry, my phone is on. What's immediately... Do you want to start that again? No, no, go ahead. All right. Um, We're unedited, motherfuckers, okay? <laughs> it's unedited, unfiltered. Okay. Unfiltered crap. Un unfiltered from brain to mouth. Yeah. Um, Sorry, what I was saying. Right, if you if you played Bad Company Two, um, the first thing you can honestly say is that the game, were, the maps were, were designed around Rush, which was the primo game mode for that particular game. In Battlefield Three, they were designed for Conquest and Rush. Some of the maps worked, some of the maps didn't. In Battlefield Four, they had gone for generic open ass world maps for the, pretty much most of the part, and then tried to designate areas to um, for game for the game modes. So, Golan Railway is a huge example of this. It's a huge map that doesn't work well on Conquest because the points are too far apart to do anything about it. It doesn't work well on Rush because it's too open, too wide, and there's no freaking cover. And t really, it doesn't work well too on TDM, although that's probably the best game mode it does work on because there's too much elevation, there's too many routes of advancement, and it's a clusterfuck once the buildings go. So um, that that's a huge example of, of why it wrong. And Operation Locker, is it? doesn't work on Conquest, doesn't work on Russian, doesn't work on TDM because it's a clusterfuck map. <laughs> so, you know, they've tried to work all game modes into all maps to give us that variety. I'm doing air quotes there, but it just doesn't work. Right. I mean, when you think about, you know, maps in Battlefield 3, they, they'd work in all variances, right? Like in... Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Green yeah, like Bizarre, I said, they, they, you know, yeah, yeah. they were designed for two game modes, Conquest and Rush. Right. And they were good. They were good enough to make to make TDM work. Yeah, as well. I mean, they were like that. That just comes down to good map design. And, and this is again, it goes back to Battlefield Four again. The map design just simply wasn't good enough. And you know, this <laughs> is like, I'm I'm sorry, I'm about to go into like rampage mode here. Why on earth were people when the game came out give it a nine out of ten? Like, how can you give it a nine out of ten when the game doesn't even launch properly and the maps are designed like? Like, Jimmy from grade school has just scribbled all over the paper. Like, what are you Look, doing? Daddy, is my map designer to take to work. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, 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 what is this? It looks like some jobber yeah. has made it, so I don't know. But, I mean, this, um, is, this is the funny thing about it, right? Um, okay. I, I could be, I'm going to be really cynical here, right? China Rising, those maps were shit. They I actually were liked, I actually liked one of those maps. <laughs> It was the desert one. Silk Road, I think, was the one you liked, wasn't it? I the liked big Silk Road in the because, it, because of the center of the map was very infantry-driven. Yeah. Like, I thought it was really nice. And also, actually, I liked the jungle map that was on there. Do you remember that one? Was that the one with the big, like, the big mountains in the middle of it that you could yeah. drive around? And... Uh, yeah, I... yeah, yeah. No, I didn't like that map at all. I, I like Silk Road, um, but I don't like the rest of them. Um, and it's going back to my cynical point. I think they included Second Assault. They had Second Assault planned as a DLC because they knew their maps were shit. They had to go back to Battlefield Three maps to get any traction. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, my honest guys. opinion. Let's get back to shit. Battlefield Three. Uh, our vanilla maps are crap, and our first DLC is a load of shit. Um, um, ideas for second DLC. Let's go back to Battlefield Three. Genius. Genius, man. <laughs> Um, Battlefield 4 is the okay, best game ever. Yeah. Alright, so enough of bashing Battlefield 4. I think there's enough of that for this episode. Uh, Alright, so your next topic is the comprehensive single player 
uh, for, for the next Battlefield game. Go over that a little bit, because I'm not too familiar with the single player. I don't really play it that often, but I know it's something you're really into, so... Anybody, anybody who knows me knows I love a good single player game, air mode. Um, I know the multiplayer is the bread and butter that gives you back the replayability, but I enjoy single player to the extent of where I would play that first before I jump into multiplayer. Always do. Um, I've, I've, I've voiced my opinion in, about this a couple of times in a couple of videos I've done, so I won't repeat them. But um, basically, I think it gives the, gives the player a much more immersive perspective when it comes to the multiplayer, if it's done right. Um, and having a three-hour, four-hour campaign that's derivative, full of cliches, um, boring as hell, on rails. Or, I mean, on rails isn't too bad, but really, but, but but doesn't really add anything, particularly when you're paying 60 quid for a game. Um, is beyond me. And if they take the single player out, they're going to have to give us something to replace it with the multiplayer. And I don't think the game in its current iteration can do that. So if Battlefield Five doesn't have a comprehensive single player, they're going to have to give us a lot more value for money when it comes to the multiplayer. Uh, either that by bringing in co-op game co-op experiences similar to that of Battlefield Three, or even a co-op campaign would be uh, pretty cool. But yeah, I, I would definitely want a much more extensive six, seven, eight hour campaign, possibly. Well, That's I mean, what I want. if you, well, one thing I have a problem, I, I made a video about the single player, I don't know if you saw it, but um, in that video I basically talked about how I felt like a lot of the single players uh, for battle, the Battlefield games have been very linear, very on rails. I feel like they could really expand upon that and they could make it, you know, more of a, a different type of experience. Um, what do you think about that? Or are you okay with that linear experience? I have I have no problem with the linear experience, provided the story's there to back it up, okay. and the gameplay's there kind to back like it up. Kind of like the of Us in the in a sense where it's yeah. like, you know it's not like a, yeah. like uh, groundbreaking gameplay, but the story's so fucking good that it just yeah exactly. The and and the and the characters you are playing with or playing you are or playing with. Add to that, um, I, again, I'm referencing by Company 2 is probably the best Battlefield single player I've played um, since I started playing the game. Uh, because the characters are funny. You understand them, you want to get to know them, you know what they're trying to do is important, or what you're trying to do is important. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm coming from. I'm not so bothered about the linear stuff, and I think they could probably make the experience different by introducing a co-op element, possibly. Uh, not exclusively because people do want to play solo from time to time, but I think it'd be interesting if they tried to change it a little bit as well. Interesting. Well, I mean, the way I think they should do it is try to go for a more uh, expansive experience, maybe make an experience base system like experience points kind of like the division if you know what i mean like kind oh. of build up your character um in a sense and maybe make it to where your character is extremely powerful in certain situations i'm not sure how you'd balance that i mean i don't think you could transfer that over into uh, <laughs> to, to multiplayer though you know because that's what the division does it has a your character it directly affects how you perform in pvp i don't think they could do something like that um it would definitely have to be. Uh, I think you would have to go down the MMO line if you're going to do an, like you're leveling up your character experience. I think a multiplayer. Right. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, because like even trying to work that out, I think it's. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's yeah. a hard time. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure. I, I, what I, what I think about, you know, overall is I think they could do a lot more with it. But you know, that's just my opinion. There are some people who are really just happy with, um, with the the single player experience, like yourself. So that is uh, fair enough. Uh, Finally, it's done right. <laughs> if yes, regarding it's done right. So you know, regarding story, and like we said. So uh, the final topic is the time setting. Now I've talked about this to death. So if you just want to go over this real quick, so you want. So the interesting thing here is you want a far future time setting now this is a very unique perspective because a lot of people either want the modern setting or world war 2 now go over your thought process here because i'm not exactly sure why you want um why you want the far future because it has such a negative stigma and from a sales perspective i think it would do absolutely horribly um but go well ahead. It, it, it's it's predominantly to do with the fact that 
modern set modern day settings or near future has been done to death. That's the first thing. There's not really much you can do, go that way without starting to speculate about North Korea, <clears throat> Call of Duty, um, you know, and the, the Russian v America has gone to shit. And if they want to, and if EA wants to operate in China, they can't use a Chi- Chinese setting as a bad thing. Um, either you know, there's there's that, and World War Two is a great setting. I love it. I think probably seeing that on the Frostbite three engine will blow my freaking mind. But at the same time, that's been done to death as well. So I think the far future setting. I'm not. I'm not saying go 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 the way Titanfall went um, because in the I can't remember the DLC we had the hover tanks. Uh, we had references to bipedal walkers, like in Metal Gear Solid. We had references to, to flying platforms, uh, similar to that, you, like you've got in uh, the Avengers, the Marvel, the Avengers secret weapons platform that flies around the sky. We had all those references in one of the DLC, which just, for me, screams that, you know, far future setting. Uh, we're going to have hover tanks, bipedal, we could have bipedal walkers, you could have very unique weapons, um, that essentially won't be overpowered. I mean, things. I mean, going through things like pulse rifles and um, specialized grenades, other than flashbangs and smokes. And I think there's a lot more you could. And coming from a single player perspective, there's a lot more you can do with the story. There's a lot more you can do with the weapons. There's a lot more you can do with the vehicles. The only limit being a person's imagination and the budget they have. So, I think if if they're willing to take a risk. They're willing to take a risk with Battlefield and move the storyline, move the time period on, then a far future setting would not necessarily be a bad thing. But you are right in saying that it will probably alienate and kill kill the community off uh, for the most part. And that's 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 really sad in all fairness. I think it's probably because we've already touched on this. Um the, the, the new generation of Battlefield players hasn't really had a World War II game. Right. Um Call of Duty 1, Call of Duty 2, Battlefield 1942, they were all in the 90s, early 90s, late 90s. Gener- the generation playing now, God bless, listen to me like I'm an old man, hasn't really had a World War II game on a modern system. And I think um, uh, games like Battalion 1944 and possibly a World War II setting for Battlefield could fill that could fill that experience and it would make money off it. Well, I mean, what's interesting but, is why do the developers feel like like because they are catering to children? Why do they feel like the the children only wants you know these modern near future and futuristic games? Like, do they feel like children do not understand history? Is that what it is that won't keep their attention spans in long enough? Because I'm telling you, like you said, Battalion 1944, when that game releases, it's it's going to be big, you know, that game's going to be huge because it's going to be the first of its kind on the next gen, so that game's going to do yeah. massive, and I hopefully that will show the developers, the AAA developers, that there are actually grown adults who play video games, and that there is a huge market <laughs> for them. The, the, why yeah. was Modern Warfare 2 so popular? And, you know, all these games in Battlefield 3, Bad Company 2, these games were catered towards adults. And that's really what it comes yeah. down to at the end of the day. When you've got crypto keys in Black Ops 3, like, this is not what... This is not what we grew up and on when it for comes to God's shooting. sake, do not do dino mode. Don't give us masks because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> So, you know, so no Ooh, you got 16 kills in a row. Here's a bunny face. No. <laughs> I, I like the bunny face. Okay, like I'm just, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Uh, you know. Um, don't, don't try and introduce something like zombies. Please don't do that. Please. Well, um, I don't know about zombies or dino mode or any of that, but I do know I have uh, the exact same uh, bunny. A bunny face uh, in my closet, so you know. Well, we don't need to know what you get up to at the weekend, uh, Jake. I, I, well, maybe you do, and maybe that's the the next discussion that we shall do. What I get up to on the weekends, but um, mm. it, it's nothing real. I just sit here and edit videos all day. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, there it is. Um, 
I think we, that was pretty. That was pretty good. We covered all the bases. Yeah, so, I enjoyed that. Um, yeah, if you want to check out Lucas's channel, it will be in the description below. But hopefully, you guys enjoy. They don't want to check out my channel. They don't. They don't want to do that. Well, so don't check oh, out oh, Lucas's oh. channel. You don't want to do that, apparently. So yeah, don't, don't don't subscribe either. I don't need any additional subs. I'm happy. Reverse psychology. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, leave in the comment section below your thoughts about what we've discussed and your thoughts on just what you want to see in the next Battlefield game. I know that I've discussed a lot about it, but really just leave your input in the comment section below. Be very curious to hear what you guys think, especially on the uh, unique guns, which is something that I, I'm really pushing for, and to make maps actually that are designed well. So uh, with that... And I suppose... And I suppose if you enjoy these type of videos, give uh, in the comments, give James more ideas for more discussion forums as yes, well. Please do, because um, I'm running out of ideas over here, right? So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> running out of ideas, damn it. All the ideas I had went stale, so screw it. We're 100% here, we keep it 100, but with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please like, share, subscribe, and peace. Thank <laughs> you.